Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on coding tic-tac-toe in Python. Now, this is going to be a text-based game, not a graphical-based game, but it's going to introduce us to AI um, on a really simple level. So if this is your first time dealing with any type of artificial intelligence, it's definitely a good tutorial to follow. Um, and even if you just want to make a cool little tic-tac-toe game, then definitely stick around for the tutorial and watch. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be walking through all of the code, how everything works, um, and typing it out with you guys step by step. So I'm just going to give you an example of what the game is going to look like, because um, I've already got it coded. I'm just going to retype everything, go through everything in detail. So it asks you to uh, choose a position that you want to place an X into. Because, so what we're going to do is we're going to say the user always goes first. Um, and we have a one to nine grid here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Choose your position. I'm just going to say two can see our computer picks where they want to go and then we can get to choose our position again in this case i'm going to go five we are blocked uh where else should we go now six like that and then i'm just going to see if the computer will take the winning move which it should i'll go nine it says oh win this time do you want to play again and then we can proceed to play again if we'd like to and that is pretty much uh, what the game is going to look like once we're done. So I don't know if this is going to be multiple tutorials or not. It depends on how long it takes me to do this. Um, I estimate it's probably going to take close to maybe an hour because I, I coded it in like 40 minutes. So if I would need to explain everything, it's going to take a bit longer. Um, so just bear with me if it's multiple tutorials or not. I'm try to break it into maybe two or three videos. Okay, so what I want to do to start is I already have all of my main functions written out and this is what I like to do to start my programs just so I make sure I don't forget anything um, and so I know what I need uh, each section of code to be doing so insert letter um, oops I should say space space is free print board is winner player move comp uh, comp move computer move whatever select random don't need two comp moves do I um, is board full and then my main so you guys can take a second to copy these out or you can just write them as I start filling them in so the first thing we need to do when we're coding a tic-tac-toe game is we need a board. So this is what's going to store our X's and O's um, for the program. So I'm just going to populate this board list uh, with 4x in range 10. Now the reason I'm saying 10 instead of 9 is because I want to have one leading space in my list. So if I have a list like this, I want it to look like this. And then so on. So I want this to always be empty because when I ask the user to input a number or a position, um, they're giving me from one to nine. They're not giving me from zero to eight. Um, so I just want to leave this here so that it makes things simpler uh, throughout the rest of the program. And you'll understand what I mean if you don't get it right now. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to start filling in some of these functions with really basic code. So insert letter. This is going to do exactly what it says. It's just going to insert the letter into our board list. Um, so I'm just going to say board pause equals letter really simple so whenever we want to insert a letter we call this we give it the letter we want to insert and then the position where we are inserting that letter space is free what this one is going to do is it's just going to check if the space that we'd like to insert something into um is free or if it's not free so if it already has an x or it already has an o this is really easy i'm just going to return and then we say board pause equals equals blank space like that. Now that's just going to give us a true or false value because that's a Boolean condition. And now print board. So we want to print out our board um, in like a good looking way so that the user can actually see what's going on. So bear with me for this one. It's kind of annoying to print this out. Um, just follow along with what I type here. I have my other window open, so I'm just going to copy that to make sure I don't mess anything up. Straight line, straight line. I think that needs another space. Yeah, it does. And there we go. And then I need to go print space plus board one plus, and this is going to be embedded like that, plus board two plus plus board three. Oops. And that is a three plus. And there is no plus again there. It just goes board three. Okay, now after that, I need to print this again. So I'm just going to copy that. Should have just copied the whole thing, but that's all right. I'm going to print 10 dashes like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, one more, I think. 
or is that yeah 11 I believe that's 11 dashes or maybe I just miscounted I don't know whatever that is that's how many you need to print then I'm gonna reprint this just by pasting that there I'm gonna copy this and just change the numbers in here so we're printing the next row so in this case I'm gonna change that to four five six like so we're gonna copy what we just wrote here print this afterwards and then we only have two more lines left we're gonna print this again changing the numbers to what are we starting at seven eight and nine and then we're going to finish off with one more of these like that now I know that's extremely tedious to print but that's the only time we're ever going to have to do it. And that's why we make a function so that we don't have to type this a bunch of times. We can just call it. So that should work. If I notice that I did anything wrong, I'll go back in the program and fix it for you guys and make sure I let you know that. Um, but that looks good to me. Okay. So we have insert letter spaces free and print board. Now what I want to do is I want to run into our next function here, which is, is winner. Now we're just going to check in this function. If, this stands for board, by the way, and this stands for letter, if we have a winner um, based on the current board. Now this one, again, is another tedious one to do. I'm just getting these out of the way at the beginning, um, but pretty much we're just gonna have to check if every single line on the board is populated with uh, the letter. So we're gonna say return, and we're gonna just do brackets like this. We're gonna say BO, I know it's a weird name for, the, for it, uh, which just stands for board equals equals le and bo8 equals equals le and bo9 equals equals le so this we've just officially done our first row um, going from bottom to top so seven eight nine if that's full we have a row there is indeed a winner and we say or and i'm just going to go down to the next line just so things are a little bit cleaner we say bo4 equals equals e le and bo five equals equals le and bo six equals equals le or and then same thing again down here bo1 equals equals le and bo2 equals equals le and oops not in the brackets there don't know what i did there oops square bracket goes back over here my bad and bo3 equals equals le or and we'll go to the next one i suppose i could probably just copy this so we've done three rows now we have seven eight nine four five six and one two three so those are our rows going across now we need to do our rows going down so to go down we're going to say if bo1 equals equals le and bo4 equals equals le and bo7 equals equals le and now go or and again i'm just going to copy this because i think it's going to save some time if i copy it a few times and just change it so now we need to say two five and eight i believe five eight and then this one is going to be three six and nine and now all that is left to do is our diagonals so i'll copy this one more time and our diagonals are one, five, and nine. And one more time, we have three, five, and seven. No, is it seven? Yes, it is seven, okay. And that should be about right. Now again, if I notice that anything's wrong here, I'm gonna change it later, but I think I did everything correctly for that. So that's the tedious stuff out of the way. And now we can move down to our main function. So already we've written insert letter, space is free, print board, and is winner. All of these are really simple. What this is just gonna do is it's gonna check each position in the grid. So it's gonna say four, which would be second row, first column, and then five, which would be second row, second column, second row, third column, so on. And if those are all full, then we have a winner. And then it's gonna return that as either true or false based on if this condition holds true. So now in our main, this is where we're actually going to be um, executing the functions and the commands. So what we want to do in here is I'm just going to print like a little welcome message. Welcome to tic-tac-toe. 
exclamation point. You can put whatever else you want in there if you want to explain the game. I'm not going to bother. Just going to go ahead and say welcome to tic tac toe. And then after that, we're going to print our board up and just show them what the board looks like so they can then see like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, for example. And now I'm going to start my main loop. I'm just going to say while true, like so. And then in here is where we are going to write all of our commands. So I'm actually just going to start filling them in now. And then the functions that we haven't yet written, um, we'll go ahead and we'll write those. So actually, instead of true, what I'm going to say here, if, if, if not, is board full, and then we're going to pass it board. Because if our board is full, then that means that we tied the game. So we don't want to continue with our while loop, we want to move to the next um, command, which is going to be down here, we're going to say if board Oh, or if is board full like that board, then we're going to print to the screen tie game like so, because there's no more spaces left to move. So the game is tied and we can print simply print that out um, at the bottom there. All right, now in here, so if the, the board is not full, we want to execute our commands where we're going to check. Um, we're going to do a player move and then we're going to do a computer move and we're going to check to see whether each of them win. So in here, I'm going to say if not is winner board with O and I'll explain this in one second once I just finished writing it. Then we're going to do a player move like that Oops. and then we're going to print the board like so. So what this is is going to be doing right now is we're going to check to see if the uh, computer has won. Since our computer is going to be O's and we're going to be X's, we're first going to check. We're going to say if um, we check and we say that the board is full, we have a straight line of O's. Well, there's no point in doing a player move um, because O's already won. So in that case, we write an else here and we're just going to print to the screen. Um, I'm going to say sorry, comma. And then I'm just going to do backslash just so I can write my S O's one this time like that, because that means that the board was full of O's. They won. There's no point in doing a player move. So let's let the player know that um, and then move on. And then from here, I'm going to break. And what break is going to do is it's going to break us out of this while loop so that we can though then go to continue um, and ask the player, do they want to play again? Because um, we're not going to continue going through the loop if we already determined to win it, right? So now I'm going to write a similar thing for the computer. So I'm just going to copy this and I paste it down here. And in this case, now I'm going to check to see if the player won. So what happens here is we said, if uh, the computer won, we're going to say, sorry, O's won this time. We're going to break the program. In this case, we're going to say, if the player won, because they just moved up here, then we're going to say, sorry, X won this time. Or in this case, since it's a player, we'll say X is X is one this time. Good job because we're rewarding the player for doing a good job and winning the game. Except in here, we're going to change a few things um, once we get into like the actual sequence of the computer move. But for now, I'm just going to change this to comp move like that. And we'll come back to this and, uh, and finish that later. Okay, so now we've used this player move function. Uh, and we've also used this is board full function, but we haven't yet finished writing these functions out. So the first one I'm going to do is is board full. And again, what this is going to do is just going to return true or false if the board is full. So a really easy way to do this is we have our board variable up at the top that has a bunch of blank spaces in it or X's and O's, right? So if we have more than two or, or more than one blank spaces, then our board is not full because we started with that blank space that's always going to be blank at the beginning. But if there's another one, that means there's one more position that we could move to. So we're going to just say if board dot count blank space like that is greater than one return true else and then we return false. Nice and simple like that. Now you might say, well, if it's that easy, why don't we just type it in here? The whole point is that we never want to repeat code when we're writing. So if I even think I'm going to use this two, maybe three times, it just makes sense to put it in a function. Um, it's also easier just to read your code like that. So you say, well, not is board full. So if the board is full, 
like you know exactly what it means and for someone else reading it it just makes more sense um, to do that so now we're gonna go to player move so we've done this is board full and in player move this is where things get a little bit more complicated but not too bad so what we want to do here is we want to just make another loop because we don't want to move through the program unless the player gives us a valid answer so just follow along with me here while run and I'm just gonna say move equals input I'm gonna ask the user where they want to move so I'm just gonna say please oops, select a position to place an X like so and I'm just gonna put this in quotation marks and you can just get these by doing a little backslash like that um, and then do like a comma or I'll just put in brackets one to nine so they know what I'm expecting as a possible answer now what I want to do is I'm gonna run a try and accept statement um, just to make sure that they are giving us a number because for example if the user were to type eight but they typed it like that then that would throw an error and we don't want our program to crash we want to catch that error um, so that we can then move forward with the program and ask the user again type another one type another one until they give us valid input so I'm just gonna say try and in here I'm gonna say move equals int move because if they try to give us something that's a string for example like hello then obviously you can't int that so it's just gonna crash and it'll go to our accept statement which I'm going to write there and get into in a second after that I want to make sure that our the move that they type in is within the range so if they, for example they type to move like 28 well what the heck does 28 mean to us it means nothing they need to type something between 1 and 9 so to check that we just say if move is greater than 0 and move is less than 10 then we're good and we'll go to the next uh, check that we need to do so now that we have valid input so they've given us a number between 1 and 9 um, it's all good now we need to make sure that where they're moving isn't already occupied and that's where the is space free um, or space is free function comes in so again in here I'm just gonna say if space oops is free and I'll put move in there then what we'll do is we're gonna say run equals false because now in this case we no longer need to keep running this input um, because they've given us valid input the space is free it's a number between one and nine and we're gonna insert it into our table and remember we did and our we'll just say insert letter here insert letter function that we did at the beginning our letter is gonna be X because it's player and the position is going to be move where they want it to move like that now if these things aren't good what we want to do is we want to um, tell the user what's wrong with their input so our first else statement is going to be out here and what it's going to uh, check is it's going to say if the move was a valid number but it wasn't in between the range let's tell them that let's say print please insert or please type a number within the range like so a little exclamation point and then our other else statement was in here and this one says space is free we're gonna say sorry comma this space is occupied like that now we need to do our final uh, exception here or whatever print statement and in this case we're just gonna say please type a number because if we couldn't int it then we're gonna move into the accept and that's because they didn't type a number we couldn't int it and that's pretty much grabbing our player move for us and that's all we really need for the player move function so now that we've finished that let's go through and just kind of um, summary what we've done so we've created a board uh, we filled it up with a bunch of blank spaces and then we've made our insert letter function, which is gonna insert a letter into our board. We've checked if the space is free by writing space is free function. We have another function that's gonna print the board um, so it looks proper on the screen. We have a function that checks if one of our uh, players is a winner or not, or if the computer's a winner. We have a function that grabs our player move, make sure that they give us valid input. And then we have, we can see if the board is full. And then in here, we go through the sequence of do a player move, then do a computer move. Um, and we're checking if one of them wins uh, throughout that.